Welcome back to Getting Set Up with the Wi-Fi Pineapple Pager. In this video, we're going to explore the Pine AP Suite and talk about rogue access point attacks. And if this is something that is new to you, well, buckle up, but at the same time, I invite you to explore uh, the breadth of all of the Wi-Fi Pineapple ecosystem, as what we have done is we have taken the best elements of the Pine AP Suite from all of the Wi-Fi Pineapples we have made before this, and we've optimized it to such a degree with such uh, uh, just in insane kernel level optimizations for, for such uh, efficiency uh, and performance that you are going to be able to have the best Wi-Fi Pineapple Pine AP experience to date. And it's going to leverage those tools that we've had on all of our devices across the board. So if you're new to this, just know that this is a evolution of a suite of tools that has been in development since 2007, and it's only gotten better, and this is an exciting new version of it that is quite performant. However, if you are used to using Wi-Fi Pineapple, a lot of these concepts will be very familiar to you, and just know that these are now, those concepts now hyper-optimized for this platform in your hands. And so with that said, let's just go ahead and dive in to the Pine AP settings and just give you a high level overview of what those look like, what that might mean for you as a pen tester on a Wi-Fi engagement and how you can leverage this to really wow your clients. So I choose the Pine AP menu and very similar to some of our other menus, you'll notice you have a list on the left and then you have the elements on the right. So these are almost like tabs. So you've got Pine AP, Open AP, Evil WPA, SSID pool, filters, and clients. So let's go ahead and just start off at the top, Pine AP, the core settings. And I have a few of these already checked as I am technically on an engagement demonstrating here in my own studio at Hack5, where I have obviously given myself permission to do this, but I can't stress enough how necessary that is to do this lawfully. So with permission, I have set up my Wi-Fi Pineapple pager to mimic open networks. What that means is all of the devices in the studio, they have what's called a PNL or a preferred network list where they remember the access points that they have connected to in the past and they prefer those. So when they see them around, they will, in many cases, join them automatically for convenience. And so by checking this box that says mimic open networks, that means that if uh, a device like my robot vacuum cleaner, I'm not kidding, in the studio looks for as it constantly connects to this hidden network to get software updates and such, it's going to send out a probe request that says, hey, is this network around? And the Wi-Fi Pineapple pager is going to hear that and say, yes, that's me. It's going to mimic that network. And then in this case, my, my robot vacuum cleaner, is going to connect to the Wi-Fi Pineapple pager. And as we discussed in the settings video, if you've set up Wi-Fi client mode, then now your Wi-Fi Pineapple pager can provide that device with internet access. So the target device connects to our pager. Our pager then provides the internet through the Wi-Fi client mode that we've previously uh, set up. And now, as we are in control of the Wi-Fi Pineapple pager, we become what is known as the man in the middle. That is our vantage point on the network. And so by leveraging all of the Linux tools and Ducky script payloads, we can perform any number of arbitrary attacks using that unique and privileged position in the network as their access point. So something to keep in mind when you use any Wi-Fi access point as you travel. Okay, the next one is collect probes, and I've turned this on. What this is going to do is, I mentioned those probes, which are uh, a, a kind of Wi-Fi management frame this, that devices send out. This, this laptop remembers networks it's connected to in the past, and it sends out a probe request saying, hi, is this network around and that network around? Well, if we check this box, the Wi-Fi Pineapple pager will hear those probe requests and it will save them for use in what is known as our SSID pool. You're gonna hear me say SSID a lot. That is just the technical term for the network name. What it shows up as 
in your list as you're scrolling through to find the Wi-Fi network of your choice. And trust me, we know there's a lot more when it comes to ESSIDs and BSSIDs. We're just gonna call them SSIDs or network names here. And so by checking that collect probes, we are automatically populating that list of networks that we may mimic if we come down to this next box, which is advertise networks. So if I check this now, what this will do is it will send out what are known as beacons, advertising our Wi-Fi Pineapple pager as all of those networks that we have collected in our SSID pool. And we'll get to that pool in just a moment, but that means that we're advertising a lot of networks and saying, hey, if you wanna join this and that and the other thing, that's us, okay. And then we have our collect handshakes. I mentioned this briefly before, handshakes are an element of the authentication with WPA networks. It's a four-way handshake. We don't need to get into the technicalities of this moment, but essentially when you type in a password for a what's called a PSK or a pre-shared key network, it's going to do that authentication. And if we can listen to it and capture all four of those four-way handshake elements, then we can run it through off-the-shelf tools to potentially crack that password if it's something we can brute force. And that is another video in of itself, but that is something that is only gotten better as GPUs have become more performant. And it's also a area where uh, there's been advancements such that you don't even necessarily need in all instances, all four elements of the four-way handshake. So by checking this box, it will collect not only what we consider full handshakes, but also what are considered partial handshakes where we don't get all four elements, but it can still sometimes be useful. And then lastly, we have randomized MAC address. And what I wanna mention about this randomized MAC address feature is that it will change the, uh, the BSSID, or let's just call it MAC address, when we are advertising these different networks so that they are random. However, by doing so, it will, change its success rate with different vendors' implementations of the Wi-Fi stack. So your iOS and Android and Windows and Mac, they all implement things a little differently. And in more modern eras, this may not be as effective as it once was or as it still is with IoT devices and things of that nature. So this is probably a box that you don't necessarily need to check, but if you know you need to check it, there it is right there for you. Okay, so let's now head over to our open access point. Now, remember, I said we are mimicking open access points. We are advertising access points. Well, we need to then host an access point, specifically an open one if those are the kinds of clients that we want to get. And so this is already checked to op uh, for our open AP. For one, I can also hide it. And this is also where we can change the network name if I truly wish. So if I wanted, I could just have one open access point. I could call it in this case, pager open. I can hit edit and change that if I'd like. Um, or in this case, I have this enabled because I am also mimicking open access points. So I wanna collect those all. Okay, so those are your open access point mimicking. And then that brings us to WPA. So I mentioned those handshakes. Well, sometimes you either know the pre-shared key of a WPA network that you wish to impersonate. Say, say you are doing what is called an evil twin attack. You would use the evil WPA AP. Or if you are attempting to gather parts of a handshake that may be useful for your engagement and you know it's WPA, obviously, then this is where you could set that up. So you can turn this on similar to the open AP. You can hide it. You can set the network name, the BSSID, which is essentially the MAC address. And then obviously, since it's WPA, there's going to be a passphrase as opposed to open where you don't have a passphrase. Okay, now the SSID pool. This is what is beaconing all of those advertisements saying, hey, this Wi-Fi pineapple pager is 
Uh, obviously, I said it's pager dash open because I've got that on, but it also is mimicking other access points. And I can come into the SSID pool. This is actually the list of networks that we are going to be advertising and mimicking. So if I choose my SSID pool, you'll see that I have this list of all of these access points and they were created uh, they were captured because I have that collect probes setting enabled. So this list will auto populate. And there is a cap to this list because there is a uh, element where there is a uh, diminishing returns on the size of your list. So really the best way to do this is in the recon phase of your engagement when you're scoping determine the names of the access points that are going to be of the most interest to your clients and add them manually by hitting add network you can say edit, and I've added one here called foo789, say OK, and save. And now we are advertising foo. And so this is a very important strategic element on your engagement because in your pre-engagement steps, you would have gathered uh, reconnaissance, we've done reconnaissance and gathered intelligence to determine what the access points that are within scope of engagement that might be enticing to your specific targets. And this is where you would populate those. And continuing going on with the scope of engagement element, if we come down to filters, let's talk about filters. There are two kinds of filters in Pine AP. You have your client filters and you have your network filters. Client filters are for specific client devices, phones, tablets, laptops, robot vacuum cleaners, and they are determined by their MAC address. So what I can do here is I can add allowed clients, edit, and it's going to pop up a keyboard specifically for MAC addresses. Okay, now within our client's uh, uh, filters, there are two different L uh, uh, modes that it can be in. You can be in deny mode or allow mode. Now, currently I have it set up in deny mode because I'm on an engagement within the Hack5 Studio where I have permission to do this. And what does that mean? What does deny mode mean? Well, it means that everyone that is not on the deny list is allowed to associate with my Wi-Fi pineapple pager. And if I come down, I can go to my uh, denied list and I can see I don't have any entries. Okay, I haven't added any. This is uh, a little dangerous of a place to be because technically anything can connect to this. So what I wanna do is in this particular mode, I need to, in my recon phase of my engagement, get the MAC addresses of all of the devices that absolutely under no circumstances can connect to the Wi-Fi pineapple pager. Now, uh, clearly I can do the same in allow mode. If I switch this over to allow mode, I can add clients to my uh, allowed client list. I can view my allowed client list. And similarly, it is indeed a MAC address that I will be adding. So if I wanted to add dead beef cafe, I would just come down here and say, D E A D B. And you'll notice that it does the colons for me. And there we go. So now this client has been added to the allow list for when I change to that mode. And to change to that mode, quite simply select that and hit A and this deny will swap to say allow. Similarly, if we come down to the next page, we will see the network filter. Same concept, deny or allow. And specific deny lists and specific allow lists. And so the network filters allow you to say, the Wi-Fi pineapple pager will say mimic open access points, but only allow associations from, if we're in allow mode, only these allowed names. Or if we're in deny mode, we will allow anyone to connect to any access point they think the Wi-Fi pineapple pager is, except for any of the listed denied access point names. So it really depends on your particular engagement, how you need to implement that. And that is a very important part of scoping. So those filters are uh, key to that. And this is where you can set those. And in another video, we can get into how to do this a little bit easier or in a different way over the shell as well. And then finally, if we come over, to the tabs again, one more down, we'll see clients. And if I select that, I will notice all of the clients that have associated to my Wi-Fi pineapple pager. And there you go. This is a very robust 
rogue access point suite that has been being refined for well over a decade and it is uh, a really powerful tool and I encourage you to learn more and to use it very wisely and this will allow you to use your Wi-Fi Pineapple Pager you know on the go on an engagement to test networks and de uh, determine which devices are susceptible to rogue access point attacks so you can go ahead and do some remediation and that's an important step because while we can use the Wi-Fi Pineapple Pager and payloads and tools to attack networks specifically, where the Wi-Fi Pineapple shines, it's its ability to determine what clients are actually susceptible to these. And we want to make sure that we do this in a very ethical way. So I hope you dive in to those filters and learn more about how to scope this properly for your engagement. All right. With that, I will see you in the next Wi-Fi Pineapple Pager video.